So I saw a beautiful lesson about love in the story of Jacob and Rachel's love. These are things to apply. I've actually heard it before from a therapist that safety is a part of love. But then I, I could see it in Jacob's story, how Jacob really prioritized the safety of Rachel when it came to his love for her. True love appears as safety, which is the person that love says, I want you to be safe. Because that is a clear example of care. It's the same way that God loves us and he protects us, keeps us safe. He wants to make us okay in all areas. And safety is a sign of true love. Somebody seeking your safety, someone wanting you to be okay. Let me go through what Jacob did that he ensured the safety of Rachel. Now, you know about the story of Jacob and Esau, how Jacob treated his brother, took his bed right, and then later took his blessings. Now, Jacob has gone ahead, married. He saw this beautiful lady, Rachel, and married from his uncle's house, as their culture was. After he got married, it has come to a place that he has to go back to his father's place with his children and his wife. And he heard that his brother was coming his way with 400 men. At this point, Jacob was very terrified. Genesis chapter 32, verse 7 to 8 actually takes this from there. Jacob was terrified at the news. He divided his household along with the flocks and heads and camels into two groups. He thought if he saw meet one group and attacks it, perhaps the other group can escape. Now look at his wisdom. He's like, I'm going to like have option B. I might make peace with my brother, but if there's no peace, if he meets the first group, I'm going to divide my family into two groups. If he meets the first group and kills them, at least the second one will run. And now look at who he puts amongst the first group. It is, it is just like something that made me like, this is love. Jacob really loved Rachel and did not want anything to happen to her. He prioritized her safety. So the next verse says, Then Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming with his 400 men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and his two seven wives. He put the seven wives and their children at the front. <laughs> Well, this is actually funny to me, but the scripture is really beautiful. Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph last. Rachel and Joseph last. This was beautiful because I'm like, the one he loved the most, he kept her last. If they start killing from the front, those ones would be safe. So a true, true love appears as safety, which is this person who wants you to be safe through and through. In everything, this person seeks your safety. I know that Jacob was actually doing this physically, but this goes beyond physical. It goes to both physical safety, emotional safety, psychological and spiritual safety. Like you are a house ban as a man because this really speaks to a man. The man, the word husband means house band. You keep the house together. You protect the house. That's your duty. That's your work. And men have to take up that responsibility. And if you are a lady or a woman, you have to know that if you are seeking a man to be with, you need to seek a man that prioritizes your safety. Because that is the real love. Real love is not this emotion that he says, I love you. I care about you. I can't live without you. Oh, this person was living all the while before you. This person was surviving all the while before you. Now that they have met you, they can't live without you. Well, I don't know how that works anyways, but I don't think it's real. It's not even real because real love is not about the emotions you feel. That's why if you even read Corinthians chapter 13, 1 Corinthians 13, it talks about love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is selfless. You can see the picture painted there clearly. And I was asking, when did patients feel good emotionally? I'm like, I didn't hear anybody give me an answer because patience does not feel good. Kindness does not really feel good if you are really kind. Not when you are kind out of convenience, but you are a kind person that God prompts you to give to people or you see people in need and you don't have that much and you have to give. And you have to give. This is what Jacob did here. He prioritized the safety of the one he loved even more than himself. He was ready to die, but he said, at least someone will escape the one that I love. I'm not saying that anybody is Jesus Christ, that somebody should die for you, but at least they prioritize your safety, your emotional safety. They're not trying to manipulate and control you and, you know, be narcissistic towards you and all of that. But they love you 
of course they are humans they're not going to be perfect but you have to look for a man that prioritizes your safety and if you are a man you have to prioritize the safety of the one you love because that's the picture of true love true love is not the picture of i love you can be without you like i said earlier like you can be without anybody you can really be without anybody your emotions are just going to be strained for a period of time but after that you're going to bounce back from it because your emotions have kind of like an elasticity you know um, tendency it's strained and it feels like you are torn apart but it's going to come together so you can be without anybody and if you really love someone it's practical you have to be pragmatic about your love not just professing because most people profess their love but are never pragmatic about it they are not practical about the love and true love is practical not just professing and saying i love you i love you i love you i love you do something then i saw this other thing about true love from jacob that true love will make the man commit when a man truly loves you he will commit he will be committed to you which means in today's culture the man won't keep you in a loop whereby you don't know where you belong whereby like i was called out by my girlfriend which i thought in my heart that i don't need to tell her that i want to be with her right and i just thought to me myself i'm just being honest and vulnerable here i thought to myself that when i get the money that i need and everything said i'm just gonna go to her and tell her now i'm ready i'm gonna do everything we're already dating right but i didn't really talk about the future in terms of in in a safe way that she will feel safe to let her know that i'm committed to this um of course she knows i'm committed to the relationship but i was not up talking about it and then making practical plans about it and she called me out on that and i I so much love that she did that for me because now i am more practical about it as much as yeah we are trusting god let it be god's will and we are trying to do the right thing but then i need to come to a place that i am more pragmatic in being committed letting her know that i am committed to this i am committed to you know protecting her and protecting her heart and that would mean i'm committed to talking about the future with her which is i'm not leaving her in a loop neither would i want to be left in a loop myself so it is a place that none of us need anybody to leave us in a loop whereby the relationship is not defined there's no amount of commitment commitment is not about having sex with someone or any of that saying we are together now they're buying gifts for you and all of that any i can buy gifts for any of my girlfriend i can buy gifts for people that i am kind to but then that doesn't mean it's commitment commitment means i get to do things talk about the future and actually work towards it to show this person that they are safe that i'm not just going to ghost them because we are living in a world that people are lying a lot so if you are with someone this is just to make it short don't be in a loop let that relationship be clearly defined so that you know where you belong with this person that you're in relationship with because true love will show commitment on all facets of it then the next thing i've seen in jacob's story which i have learned about true love is true love serves looks like service this person wants to serve you and even when they are serving you they are not doing it kind of like a servitude like i'm doing this because of you don't you see the way i'm doing what I'm, this and that they, are, they, are, they have not they don't start making it kind of like counting the things i've done for you you need to be with a humble person a real humble person won't do things for you and then come up and start you know pointing those things on your face i've done this for you i've done that for you in fact they will be feeling shy to even tell you what they have done for you because they feel like i've not really done enough like i want to do and then i could see in jacob's story genesis 29 let me just read it since jacob was in love with rachel he told her father i'll work for you for seven years if you give me rachel your younger daughter as wife now this is commitment first of all and then the part of working for the father for seven years that's service and he didn't sleep with her because according to their culture there was no sex in it he didn't do it and said oh i'm already having sex with her you know i'm going to commit with you with you i've already told your dad so let's go and have sex so that's why when we have to obey the scriptures if we call ourselves christians this is for christians not for any other person if you call yourself a christian you have to obey what the scripture says about this aspect of life jacob did not sleep with rachel before he married her. he wiped her before he, he had sex with her he told the father i want to serve you for seven years so that i can marry your younger daughter in as much as jacob was deceived mm, he still did 
walk again for another seven years for Rachel. But let me just continue here to show you the part of the service. So Jacob walked seven years to pay for Rachel, but his love for her was so strong that it seemed to him but a few days. I don't know how seven years would look like a few days, but it's as if he wasn't even looking at the time. He was just loving on her. He was just looking at what he's going to experience with the love of his life that he did not look at what he was doing to get her as servitude. The Bible says it was seemed to him, but a few days, it's like seven years is like just three days. I just took three days to do this work to get you. And sometimes that is what love looks like. It looks like service. You're saving the one you love and it doesn't feel painful. And if you have the capacity, you would like to do more because you love this person. Because true love will make you serve this person. Because you are selfless, love is patient, love is kind, love is selfless. All of these things mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it talks about the true nature of love. So it comes to serve. I'm here. What can I do for you? Like It's a thought of saying, when you get into anybody's life, it's not about what can I get from the person. It's about what can I do for this person? What can I contribute to your life? How can I make your life better? Emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, physically. How can I make your life better? What ideas can I give you to upgrade your life? Because I do not want to come into your life to downgrade your life. I want to come into your life to upgrade, to make sure you have an upgrade in life. And that is what true love should do when you come into my life, upgrade my life. Don't let me remain where I was. Help me because I want us to work together so that my life will be upgraded. That is service to one another that is the sign of this is true love you are selfless you are kind to the person you're not boastful which is i've done this for you i've done that for you i've done the third for you you've not even looked at all the good things i've done for you you cannot even appreciate and this is not me saying if you're with someone and somebody is actually doing good for you that you should show ungratefulness to someone that is loving on you and doing things for you really show them how grateful you are for the things they are doing but that doesn't mean because you show how grateful you are that you compromise maybe okay now the man comes to you and says, I've done all these things for you. Come and let's have the sex that I've been talking about. And then you are a Christian and we are supposed to be living the life to honor God. No, that, that's not a part of what to compromise on. You are kind. Your kindness should not have strings attached to it. It should be true kindness. Because true love comes with true kindness, true patience, true selflessness. Not a selflessness that is an action to get the person to think that you are what you are not. The preacher once said that I listened to, Say what you mean and mean what you say. If you tell someone I love you, understand what you mean. Say what you mean and mean exactly what you say. So I'm going to end this video here, but I want to hear from you in the comment section. What are the signs of true love that you've learned in life? Let me know. There are more. I know there are so much, but I'm just sharing this few that I saw in Jacob's and Rachel's story. And I believe it's going to bless someone. Thank you for watching today's video. And God bless you. Bye-bye.